This lesson deals with three-phase AC power analysis. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 16, starting on page 27. Consider a Y-connected source and a Y-connected load. So between line A and neutral, I have a voltage V sub AN. Between B and neutral, V sub BN. And then between C and neutral, V sub CN. So again, we have a Y type appearance with a common connection at the neutral. Suppose that we have a load that has exactly the same impedance. We'll just call that Z. And the current coming in here we'll call I sub A, I sub B, and I sub C. And these are all phasors. So the current I sub A is the current that's in the line A for I sub B, B, and for I sub C, C. By Ohm's law, we can find the current I sub A then as the phasor voltage V sub A N divided by Z. But V sub A N has a magnitude of V sub P, our phase voltage at angle zero, and our impedance has some magnitude and an angle. We'll call it the magnitude of Z at angle theta. So the magnitude of the current then is the phase voltage magnitude divided by the magnitude of the impedance at an angle of zero minus theta. Likewise for I sub B, we have the phasor voltage divided by the impedance, but that has the same magnitude, the phase voltage, but the angle is minus 120. Same impedance, and so the magnitude is the same. It's the phase voltage divided by the magnitude of the impedance, but now the angle is minus 120 minus theta. And likewise for I sub C, it's the phase voltage, V sub C N divided by Z, which has the same magnitude, but the angle now is minus 240, same impedance, and so our magnitude of our line current is the same, but the angle is minus 240 minus theta. So the magnitude of the line current is the phase voltage divided by the magnitude of the impedance. Let's draw a phasor diagram. Here are phase voltages at angle zero, minus 120, and minus 240. And our current has the same magnitude, it's called it I sub L, but the angle is minus theta, show that over here, and then the same minus theta, but then an additional 120, so it's 120 this way, and then for I sub C, minus 240. So again, we have the same magnitudes for these currents, and they're shifted by 120 degrees. So again, their vector sum will be equal to zero. But what is that? The vector sum of these line currents, I sub A plus I sub B plus I sub C, is the neutral current. So the current in the neutral is zero call this a balanced YY circuit. These have no current in the neutral. So in a power system, if we have a Y connected source and a Y connected load, there's current in the wires A, B, and C, but not in the neutral. Now nothing's perfect, so there'd be some current in the neutral. But the thickness of this wire doesn't need to be the same thickness as the other wires because it's not carrying a large current. And this can save some money by having a thinner wire for one of the four wires. Let's next calculate the total complex power delivered to the load. That would be the voltage times the current conjugate for each element. This is the first element, the second element, and the third element. What is this? This has a magnitude of V sub P at angle zero. And this had a magnitude of I sub L, but at an angle of minus theta, so the conjugate would be a plus theta. Same magnitude here, but the angle is minus 120. And the current, now we're taking the negative of that, which was minus 120 minus theta, so now it's a plus 120 plus theta. And then for phasor voltage V sub CN, Magnitude of V sub P, the angle minus 240. And then the current, minus 240 minus theta, becomes plus 240 plus theta. When you multiply these out, you get an interesting result. Magnitude of the voltage and the current. We're going to add the angles. They get theta. Same magnitude, but now look at the angle here. I've got minus 120 plus 120 plus theta. So the angle of theta. And the same is true here. The angles add, and I get the cancellation of the plus and minus 240. So I've got the same magnitude three times in the same angles. So it's equal to three times the magnitude of the phase voltage and the magnitude of the line current and the angle of theta. Now back on page 26, we showed that the line voltage was the square root of three times the phase voltage. So I could replace this by the line voltage magnitude divided by the square root of three. Think of this as the square root of three times the square root of three. So when those was canceled, you have the square root of three, the line voltage times the line current magnitudes and the angle of theta. Now back on page four, our definition of complex power, this was the power factor. So the angle of the per phase impedance of the Y connected load is the power factor angle theta. So you get this nice property of a Y connected source and a Y connected load. Let's next consider a Y connected source and a delta connected load. So here's our Y connected source, common point at the neutral. And then here I've got a delta connected load. We define what a delta connection was, likewise with a Y back in ECE 201 in chapter two. So I have an impedance Z across the lines that I have, A, B, and C. So this impedance is between A and B, this impedance is between B and C, and this impedance is between C and A. 
Let's define the current in each of these phases as I1, I2, and I3. Then I can calculate the complex power. I can have line currents, I sub A, I sub B, and I sub C. All right, the current I1 is the line voltage that's across here. It's V sub AB divided by the impedance Z. This current here is gonna be the line voltage V sub BC divided by Z. And then lastly, the current here, I3, is gonna be the line voltage V sub CA divided by Z. The results are on the next page. Now we showed back on page 25 that the magnitude of the line voltage was equal to the square root of three times the phase voltage, and we called that V sub L, and the angle was 30 degrees. Again, our impedance has some magnitude and angle. So the overall magnitude of the current, I1, is the magnitude of the line voltage divided by the magnitude of the impedance, and then the angle is 30 degrees minus theta. The current I2 we showed was the line voltage, V sub BC divided by Z, and on page 26, we had shown that this was equal to the square root of three times the phase voltage, which we all call the line voltage magnitude, and the angle was minus 90 degrees. So we're gonna divide that by the impedance, magnitude, and angle. So we get the same magnitude for the phase current, but the angle now is minus 90 minus theta. And lastly for I3, it's the line voltage V sub CA divided by Z, which has a magnitude of the square root of three times the phase voltage, which again is V sub L, this is on page 26, and the angle was minus 210 degrees. Dividing by the magnitude and angle of the impedance, we get the same magnitude of the phase current, but now the angle is minus 210 minus theta. Now here again, if we add these three currents, they have the same magnitude, but their angles are shifted by 120 degrees. So their vector sum is again zero. So again, we'll have no current in the neutral. Let's again calculate the complex power absorbed by the load. That's gonna be the voltage across each impedance times the conjugate of the current. So here is V sub AB and I1, so we're gonna take the conjugate of the current I1, the conjugate of the current I2, and the conjugate of the current I3. And we've shown that above here that the magnitude was V sub L and the angle was 30. The magnitude here was V sub L, angle minus 90, and the magnitude of V sub CA was V sub L at angle minus 210. Current I1 had a magnitude of I sub P and an angle of plus 30 minus theta, so the conjugate's gonna be the same magnitude but the angle's a negative. Likewise for I2, the angle was minus 90 minus theta, and now it'll be the negative of that, which is plus 90 plus theta. And lastly, the current I3 conjugate, the angle was minus 210 minus theta, so now it's a plus 210 plus theta. So we multiply this out, we're gonna add the angle, so we get magnitude of the line voltage times the magnitude of the phase current. But the angles here, the 30 and minus 30 cancel, so we just get theta. Same magnitude here, and again, the minus 90 and plus 90 cancel, just have theta. And likewise here, the two tens cancel and get theta. So we've got this three times. So three times the line voltage magnitude times the phase current magnitude and the angle of theta. So again, comparing this to our definition of complex power back on page four, we have that the angle of the per phase impedance of the delta connected load is the power factor angle theta. And this is of course the angle of our impedance in our, in our delta connected load. There's an interesting relationship between the power absorbed in a delta load and a Y load. Let me show you how to derive that. Let's use the delta to Y transformations we used in ECE 201 in chapter two to replace our delta load with a Y connected load. I'm gonna grab the formulas from that chapter two derivation. So here I've got a delta with a Z sub A, Z sub B, and Z sub C, where Z sub A is across from node A, Z sub B is across from node B, and Z sub C is across from node C. The delta has the same nodes, A, B, and C, but then has this extra node here, and Z1 is by node A, Z2 is by node B, and Z3 is by node C. So given Z1, Z2, and Z3 here, we can get the value from the delta with these relationships. We had resistors here, but now we can put impedances. If you wanna go the other way, start with a Y and convert to a delta, this was the formulas for creating the deltas from the Y components. We're really gonna go from the delta to the Y here, so we're using these formulas. Now, if in my delta, the three impedances are the same, and I just call that Z, then putting that into this formula, I wind up getting Z squared over three Z, and the Z squared cancels with one of the Z in the denominator, and we just get Z over three. Let's take our last formula for calculating the complex power absorbed by the load in a delta connection, and let's use these relationships we have with the conversion to a Y. Now from page 27, we had that the line current magnitude was the phase magnitude divided by the magnitude of Z sub Y, which we showed was equal to Z over three, where Z is the impedance in our delta connection. 
It also showed on page 26 that the magnitude of the phase voltage was related to the magnitude of the line voltage by 1 over the square root of 3. So substitute now in for this line voltage magnitude. It's V sub P divided by the magnitude of Y. The phase magnitude is equal to the line magnitude divided by the square root of 3. And then Z sub Y, the reciprocal, would be 3 over the magnitude of Z. You think of this as the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, so it's going to cancel with one of these, and we get the square root of 3 times the magnitude of the line voltage divided by the magnitude of the impedance. And then on page 29, we had shown that this was equal to the magnitude of the phase current. Now let's go back to our delta load and take our absorb power, which we found to be 3 V sub L I sub P in angle theta, and substitute in the value for I sub P here, which is I sub L over the square root of 3. Then we get, again, think of this as the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. So we get the square root of 3 e sub L times I sub L at angle theta. Now this is for the delta connected load, but this is the same formula we had for the Y connected load. So the power absorbed by the load, whether we're in a Y or delta, is equal to the square root of 3 times the magnitude of the line voltage times the magnitude of the line current at angle theta. Lastly, the power factor angle theta is the per phase angle of the load because the transformation z sub y equal to z over 3 didn't alter the phase angle of the impedance, just the magnitude. And these are some properties of y and delta connected loads.